Okay. And then the last thing uh, of this section is the following. And it just, it's just a, I think it's a great visual of representing what he's saying because it can sound really sort of spooky, space age out there. But it really isn't. It really isn't. And it, it definitely has um, solid grounding and sort of logic. It's almost irrefutable. Um, there are things that you can debate about Buber, and there's a lot of debate about Buber. But the thing that's not up for debate is the fact that it's, it's definitely grounded logically. All right. Um, the, next, the last page, page four, what I put was, I titled it The Infinite Manifest Finite, right? And that sounds very Hegelian. Um, and I know it sounds Hegelian, but it fits Buber's account as well, right? The idea of the infinite being manifest within that which is not infinite, that which is finite. Um, it's a pretty audacious claim, uh, and I know the example that I'm giving is, it, it approximates that claim, but it's a good, I think it's a good visual. And it definitely, sort of, it definitely, uh, hopefully, it, it, it adds a clearer understanding of what Buber is attempting to do and describe here. So any relational experience to the thou is a relational experience to the infinite thou. So he, he makes, and actually, I want to read the quote. I have in my notes to read you the quote. So I'll read you the quote because it's sort of crazy. His language is ridiculously cryptic. And I'll read it. He says, the bottom of, I don't know if you still have the same book, whatever, but um, bottom of page six. In every sphere, in every sphere, in its own way, through each process of becoming, through a process of becoming, we'll return to that. It's very platonic, right? So I'll start over again. In every sphere, in its own way, through each process of becoming that is present to us, we look out toward the fringe of the eternal thou. We look out on the fringe of the eternal thou, right? So read that again. In every sphere in its own way, through each process of becoming that is present to us. So things that are present to us, so here we are, right? And we talked about one, two, and three, which correspond to this, right? Um, so let's go with two, because two is the clearest. My relational experience to other men. Other men are present to me, right? In every sphere in its own way, through each process of becoming that is present to us, my, you being present to me, we look out toward the fringe of the eternal thou. We look out towards the fringe, so you can imagine that here's the fringe, and here's the eternal thou. Right? Here's the eternal thou. We look out towards the fringe of the eternal thou. Uh, look out towards the fringe of the eternal thou. In each, right? In each, we are, uh, in each, we are aware of a breath from the eternal thou. From, 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 right? From the eternal thou. In each thou. In each thou. In each thou, we address the eternal thou. So he definitely, unequivocally, undeniably makes a distinction in the use of the term thou. We have the thou, which I, I don't know how to classify it. In each, I, we'll call it each thou, to use his words. And then we have thou, which is the eternal thou. Right? So we have two forms. And I probably should have put this in the notes, and I, and I might go back now that I'm thinking about it, put it back in the notes. Two forms of thou. I'll make sure I put that back in the notes if I don't forget, right? But it's in the video, so. Um, so two forms of thou, thou. One, the each thou represented to me, or presented, I think the word, presented to me, and the eternal thou. By looking at this thou, by looking at another man, another woman, I see in that individual just an instantiation, if you will, of the great thou. And that directs me towards that eternal thou. There's no other way to understand that, at least for me, than an instantiation of that eternal in the, in, 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 in the finite. Right? It is Hegelian in that sense, right? It's the infinite manifest finite. Sounds pretty heady, sounds pretty technical, but that's my explanation of it. So I would look at the eternal thou, right? The eternal. Right? I would look at the eternal, the eternal thou. Let me down. Uh, right. Um, for all 
x, right, such that x is the eternal thou, right, for all x, it's a universal claim, right, a universal claim, for all, for all of a type, such that that type is the thou, and actually you should just put thou, and I have to clear that, right, such that, yeah, I need to clear that, clarify that, such that is thou, right, for all x such that that x is thou, then what we do is we instantiate, right, a particular thou, right, there is a y, such that that y is a random instantiation of the thou. So I do need to delete that eternal there, right? Um, there is a y, such that that y is a random right? At least that's the way I understand it, right? And it makes sense, right? So you have the universal the universal being uh, instantiated, right? You have the universal being instantiated. What he is not saying, because I actually had, who did I have this conversation with? I had it with, uh, I had it with, uh, oh my goodness, I forgot, Matt. What's Matt's ID? Um, Turbo Soul. Turbo Soul 95 or something like that, I forgot. So I had this conversation with Matt, right? You cannot um, universally generalize from an existential instantiation. If Buber was saying that, he'd be wrong. Coming from here to here is not a problem. How do we get back, right? The way that we get back up is not by um, generalizing from an instantiation. He's not quite saying that. What he's saying is, um, and I'm going to find the passage, though each process of becoming, um, through each process of becoming that is present to us, right? as instantiated, is present to us, we look out toward the fringe of the eternal. So it's just an approximation, right? It's not generalizing from an instantiation, it's just I, I see um, a bigger picture in a representation of its instantiation is what he's saying. So it's not technically sort of this biconditional because that's, that's illogical. Um, it's just a visual, it really is a visual, right? The universal is instantiated and in looking at the instantiation, I sort of have um, an inclination back into the universal. Another sort of less mathematical concept is, insofar as you look at my daughter, um, you recognize in her part of me. So you see me in her. She, she, in a sense, is an instantiation of me. right? And my son is an instantiation of me. And in being presented with my daughter, you look at her, you look at him, you say, wow, he really does look like his dad. right? Oh, wow, she really does look like her dad. Right, so you see me in them. That's another way of looking at this, right? So to be technical, you can't go from this way to this way logically. But what he's saying is in the instantiation, you sort of get a glimpse into that which is generalized. So hopefully, uh, that, made, <laughs> hopefully that helped. So uh, that is going to conclude my uh, discussion on Martin Buber's I Thou, the first bit. And I'll work my way through it and um, hopefully complete it. Eventually, I'm sure I will complete it. With that being said, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Goodbye.